Hey guys, how you doing? This is Benjamin with Benjamin Exotics, and in this video today, we're going to be talking about something that doesn't get talked about nearly as much as it really should in the ball python community, and that is going to be the number one key for your ball pythons growing not only the biggest and strongest, I did another video on this, but this is really, in my opinion, one of the main keys for getting your ball python to actually grow to its intended and full potential size. So, this is good for, you know, especially if you're even going to consider ever breeding ball pythons, this is a must watch video, but if you actually even just care about your pet that you have at all, which is most people on this channel just have a pet, don't really want to ever do any, you know, breeding, this is still key, whether a breeder, you know, pet keeper, this is something you guys need to be seeing. So, what we're talking about today is rodent quality. Now, I've talked about this before, but not too in-depth, but I thought I'd make an entire video to address it. It's very simple. Our philosophy over, you know, I guess at Benjamin's Exotics, and the way I do things, and the way, you know, I don't really have too much of a team, but I have people that help me out. The way we do things is we really have the philosophy, quality over quantity, I'd much rather produce 10 amazingly healthy big ball pythons for, you know, whoever to have as pets to own, than produce a hundred ball pythons that are of okay quality. So that's really the stance I'm looking at. And I'm also looking about at that with food. And the biggest thing for ball python growth is very simple. What you put in is what you get out. It's food. Now, most of the time, the bigger companies like, what do we have? Rodent Pro, Perfect Prey. Most of those companies do have very good quality rats, or at least, I wouldn't say very good quality, substantial quality, pretty good, decent, nothing to be, you know, award-winning quality. But you guys really want to be paying attention to where you get your rodents from and what they're eating. For example, look at leopard geckos, right? If any of you guys keep, if bal and boas, I hope I just didn't butcher your name, but if bal and boas is watching right now, you keep leopard geckos, I'm sure, mate. You would know that, you know, with leopard geckos especially, you need to supplement their food. But for snakes, we never do that. And there's some reasons, you know, from what I've heard, snakes don't always digest supplements on the outside of the rat as good as, you know, like a leopard gecko would. And there's some reasons we don't do that. So when we're talking about rodents, we really want to be focused on gut loading. What is actually in this rodent? For example, like this guy right here. Size is not everything, especially when we're talking about rodents, okay? I can have two rodents like this that are the exact same size. You know, same, look the same, same everything. This is like a, maybe a weaned rat, pretty small weaned rat, but just about that, okay? They can be the exact same size, but if one of them was fed high quality food, and the other one was fed just like crappy, do you know, dollar store dog food, the one that is the higher quality is the one I want to feed to my snakes, because when you put this into your snake, you're going to get more out. You got to remember, in the wild, the rodents don't have any sort of, you know, food shortage, okay? They'll even cannibalize each other sometimes to get the protein and nutrients they need. But in, you know, captive breeding, if we don't get to the amount of protein, fat, and all these other good minerals that rodents need into their body, our snakes are not going to do the best. Just like with mealworms and stuff. I gut load my mealworms for my geckos, okay? Or for my gecko, at least. I only have one at this moment. But I, you know, feed broccoli, cucumbers, what else you got? Potatoes, carrots, anything that's really high, celery, anything that's really, you know, high in calcium and protein, the things that these, you know, mealworms really need. It's the same thing with our rodents. So we really have to be looking at the sources that we get our rodents from, considering the source, and making sure it's high quality. Because if you're trying, especially if you're trying to breed uh, ball pythons ever, or if you're even ever considering it, your females way more than the males, you still want to give your males high quality food, but your females, even more than the males, need that extra energy, okay? Females can literally, I've heard of this before, females can literally die if they do not have the proper nutrients to lay eggs, okay? Their body just works way too hard, they suck lots of the nutrients out of their actual body that they can't afford to lose, but they do it anyways, their body does it at least, and they put all that into egg production, they lay the eggs, they get really sick, and you know, in two or three weeks they die. Because they did not have enough nutrients to put into those eggs 
and what happened to their body, it sucked nutrients out of the snake's already built body to make those eggs. Now this is a rare case, it's not something that is always going to happen or that happens on a regular basis, but I have heard of it. First, can, first hand, you know, encounters with local breeders I know, friends of mine, and it's really not a good situation. So when we're looking at rodents, the biggest thing for ball python growth is we have to be finding out what kind of food are our rodents getting fed. If you're working with someone local, this is the best. With your bigger guys, you know, like Rodent Pro, Perfect Prey, it's harder to find out what they're feeding unless they have a YouTube channel or something like that, which neither of those guys do that I know of, unless it's, you know, hidden somewhere in YouTube land that I've never found. But with your local breeders, the good thing is, even if you pay a little bit more, you can ask them, well, what are you feeding? Okay, you can even sometimes go to their facilities, you know, normally it's just like a basement or a house or a shed or something, but you can go to where they're breeding their rodents and see how they're being kept, make sure there's no, you know, disease running around, because even if your rodent has a disease and it's fed to your snake, probably won't give you too many problems, but if they have like tumors and stuff, I would never feed my snakes anything like that. I just don't want to take that risk. You can see, you know, how they're keeping the rodents. Are they keeping them dirty? clean you know what's the setup and especially what are they feeding them are they just going out to the dollar store or to your local you know pet store and getting just regular dog food or are they feeding a very high you know cattle or not cattle like i know some people even i think balls to you does this they feed pig food because it's very high in nutrients and it's perfect for rats are they feeding like the high quality missouri rodent food i'm not you know don't quote me i might not be having the correct name for these things, but you guys really want to be watching what your snakes eat. So if you guys go out and let's say you go and you go to Rodent Pro, okay, and you buy a rat like this. This rat to me looks pretty good, and I know from what I've heard and I've talked to different people, Perfect Prey really does do a pretty good job on quality. But let's say you order from Rodent Pro or Underground Reptiles, anybody, okay, and you get rodents and you know, they're just skin and bone and they really don't have any nutrients on them, or especially if they have tumors. In my opinion, you guys can make your own decisions. I would throw the whole bag away. I'd go out, dump it in the field or something, or just, you know, have it, you know, thrown in the trash. So when the trash guy comes, he takes it away. I would never feed a low-quality rodent to my snake for any extended period of time, okay? Because, especially in the first three years of their development, it's going to, you know, the quality of the rodents is going to determine how strong their bones are, how good their, you know, immune system is. You know, if you have a bad immune system, you could be dealing with respiratory infection, mouth rot, all these different things. So, while in the, you know, short term, buying low quality rodents could save you some extra cash, in the long term, with all the shots and stuff that could be needed if you don't give them high quality food, I just don't think it's worth it, okay? It's not... Would you eat low-quality food? I mean, some people out there, you know, some people eat ramen noodles their whole life, and, you know, you, that's your own choice. But, personally, I would never feed my snakes, whether they're breeding or not, a low-quality rodent. You can look at it from an economical standpoint. You're actually saving money going with more high-quality rodents because you have less health issues. And all around the board, higher-quality rodents are what you guys really need to be looking for. It is, in my opinion, the number one key to ball python growth and you know development so this is a little bit pretty in-depth video but hope you guys did enjoy this video hopefully you got across you know the main point why high quality rodents are such an important part of you know just keeping a pet ball python forget breeding most people don't breed just keeping a pet ball python and i hope you guys really do take my words and advice in this video to heart if you do like this video please give it a like and of course if you like the channel consider subscribing and I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys later.